Okay, so uh, normal distribution, also known as uh, Gaussian, ano, Gaussian's distribution, is a probability distribution uh, that is symmetric about the mean, showing that data near the mean are more frequent in occurrence that than data from uh, from the mean. So again, uh, a normal distribution is the proper term for probability bell curve. No, it is a normal distribution that mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. It has a zero skew and a kurtosis of three. So normal distributions are symmetrically, but not all symmetrically distributions are normal. So in reality, most pricing distribution are not perfectly normal. Okay, to give us more details, let us all welcome our presenter. Good morning. My topic is all about normal distribution and probability. So, i-define natin ano ba yung uh, normal distribution na ito. Normal distribution is also called the Gaussian distribution. The most common distribution function for independent, randomly generated variables. These variables was formed based on a group of scores or values, which most of the values can be found at the middle. Normal distributions are symmetrical, but not all symmetrical distributions are normal. It's also a bell shape. As you can see in the graph, the, the curve here is a bell shape. And then, kapag hinati mo yung curve na ito sa gitna, so makakakuha ka ng uh, dalawang area, and those area should be identical, meaning the area under the left side of the of the middle and then the right side should be the same or uh, symmetrical or identical let's take the properties of normal distribution the graph is continuous curve and has a domain of negative infinity up to positive infinity this means that x may increase or decrease without bound so as you can see on the graph meron po tayong x-axis and yun na is tinatawag na zero or the mean. So, yung value on the left of zero will last until the negative infinity and the value to the right of the zero will last up to positive infinity. So, another property is the graph is asymptotic to the x-axis. The value of the variable gets closer and closer but will never intersect with the x-axis. So as the x gets larger and larger in a positive direction, the tail of the curve approaches but will never touch the horizontal axis. The same thing gets larger and larger in the negative direction. So meaning, hindi po sila magmimit. Yung x-axis natin at saka yung uh, normal curve ay hindi po yan mag intersect Another property, the highest point on the curve at x is equals to mu or the mean. The mode, the median of the distribution are also found at the center of the graph. This indicates that in a normal distribution, the mean, median, and mode are equal. Another property is that the curve is symmetrical to the mean. It means that when the area below the curve, when cut into two parts with respect to the mean, the resultant area is equal to each other, with, which is 50% each. The total area below the curve is then equal to 100%. As you can see po dito sa graph, nung paghinati po natin sa gitna yung ating normal distribution curve makakakuha po tayo ng dalawang area which is symmetrical na bibigyan po natin ng 50% each and pag pinagsama po natin yung dalawang area na to makakabuo po tayo ng 100% Another property is that the total area in a normal distribution under the curve is equal to 1 each area that has been divided and are considered are 
can be equated to 0.5. So, if you add the two areas, 0.5 plus 0.5 equals to 1. Bali, dito po sa properties na ito, i-convert lamang yung 50% into 0.5 and then yung 100% to 1. So, in general, the graph of a normal distribution is a bell-shaped curve with two inflection points, one on the left and another on the right. Inflection points are the points that mark the change in the curve's concavity. Inflection point is the point at which a change in the direction of a curve at mean minus standard deviation and mean plus standard deviation. Note that each inflection point of a normal curve is one standard deviation away from the mean. Another properties po is that every normal curve corresponds to the empirical rule, also known as 68 95, 99.7% rule. So, ano-ano nga ba itong 68, 95, at 99.7 na ito? So, ito po yung para sa 68. So, about 68.3% of the area under the curve falls within one standard deviation away from the curve. So, meaning, is one one standard deviation away from zero sa left meron siyang area na 34.15 and to the right meron din siyang same area which is 34.15%. So kapag pinagsama natin ito, so meron tayong area na equated to 68.13%. So ito naman po yung para sa 95 natin. So sinasabi about 95.4% of the area under curve falls within two standard deviation away from the mean. So, ang mean natin is zero. So, bibilang ka ng dalawa to the left. So, meron kang hang up to negative two. Then, pag kinuha mo yung area niya from zero to negative two, meron siyang 47.7%. Then, dito naman tayo sa right. Zero to two. Then, if you want to get the area, meron siyang 47.7%. Then, pag pinag-add natin yung dalawang areas na to, kakakuha tayo ng 95.4%. Then, same lang din po dito sa 99.7 rule na to. So, ang sinasabi, about 99.7% of the area under curve falls within 3 standard deviation away from the mean. So, 0 yung mean. Bibilang ka ng 3 palayo sa kanya. So, 0 to negative 3. Then, pag kinuha natin yung area from 0 to negative 3, so, meron tayong 49.85%. Ganon din naman po sa positive values. So, to the right of the 0, 0 up to 3. Then, if you want to get the area, meron po tayong uh, 49.85%. Then, pag uh, pinagsama natin yung dalawa na to, yung dalawang areas na nakuha natin, meron tayong 99.7%. So, para maintindihan po natin mabuti, let's take this sample problem. A continuous random variable x is normally distributed with a mean of 45 and a standard deviation of 6. Illustrate a normal curve and find the probability of the following. Yung letter A, 39 is less than x, less than 51. So, para makuha natin yung uh, x values natin, Yung uh, mean natin na 45, babawas natin sa standard deviation para makuha natin yung values pertaining to negative 1, negative 2, negative 3 doon sa negative values natin. So, ima-minus natin yung 45 minus the standard deviation. So, 45 minus 6, meron tayong 39, then 39 minus 6, meron tayong 33, then 33 minus 6, meron tayong 27. So, however, on the positive values naman, or the others, the right side of the of the graph, i-add naman natin yung ano, yung uh, mean natin 
and the uh, standard deviation. So, 45 plus 6, so 51. Then, uh, 51 plus 6, 57. Then, 57 plus 6, meron tayong 63. So, ang hinahanap natin is yung area from 39 up to 51. So, meron silang uh, one deviation, standard deviation away from the mean, which is the 45. So, sa, uh, according sa ating uh, empirical rule, yung one standard deviation away from the mean, meron siyang area na 34.15. So, pareha silang one standard deviation away from the mean. So, kukunin natin yung summation nilang dalawa. So, makakakuha tayo ng 68.3%. So, dito naman po sa letter B natin, uh, 33 is less than X and less than 63. So, Meron tayong, uh, kukunin natin yung area mula 33 up to our mean which is 45. So, meron siyang uh, 2 standard deviation. So, meron siyang 44.7%. And then, kukunin naman natin yung for the right side na 45 up to 63. So, 45 up to 63, meron siyang uh, 3 standard deviation. So, According sa ating empirical rule, meron naman tayo diyang 49.85%. So, para makuha natin yung area from uh, 33 up to 63, so, isasum natin yung mga nakuha nating areas sa both sides. So, meron tayong 47.7 plus 49.85. Then, we get the answer of 97.55%. So, dito naman po sa letter C, which is X is greater than 45. So, yung mean natin is may value na 45. Ang sabi, all values greater than 45. So, alam na ba natin na yung half niya is 50%? Then, so, meron tayong 50%. Kasi all values na mas malaki sa 45. Walang sinabing limit. Halimbawa, up to 51 or up to 57 or up to 63. Greater than lang ang sinabi. So, makakuha tayo ng 50%. Then, para po dito sa last natin, sa letter D, ang sabi, X is less than 39. So, ang ibig niya sabihin, is all values na papunta, papaliit. Walang sinabing limit kung hanggang 33 or 27. So, all values ito mula 39 pababa. So, ang gagawin natin dito, Para makuha natin yung area corresponds to 39 and below. So, kukunin muna natin yung kabuuan which is 50%. Then, ibabawas natin yung area from 45 up to 39. Para makuha natin yung value ng 39 papaliit. So, meron tayong 50% minus the area ng 39 to 45 which is 34.15. I-minus natin sila, so makakakuha tayo ng 15.85%. So, ito yung value from uh, 39 to negative infinity. Next po is yung application of normal distribution. So, meron po tayong formula dito na J is equals to X minus Mu over Sigma. Where yung J po is our J value. X is the value of any particular observation or measurement. The mu equals to the population mean. And the sigma is our population standard deviation. For the application of a normal distribution, we have a sample problem here. So let's read. The average pag-ibig salary loan for RMC Company Inc. employee is 23,000 pesos. If the depth is normally distributed with a standard deviation of 2,500 pesos, find the probability that the employee owes less than 18,500. So, first is to write down the given. So, we have the mu is equal to 23,000. Our sigma is equal to 2,500. And the x is equal to 18,500. Then, we have the approach here in solving the problem like this. The first approach is to draw the figure and represent data. Then, find the Z value for 18,500. And third is to find the appropriate area percentage. And the last one will be subtract area from 0.5.
So let's take po yung uh, first approach in solving the problem, which is to draw the figure and uh, represent data. So as we have studied earlier, in drawing the curve of a normal distribution, it's like a bell shape. So we have drawn a bell shape and then uh, at the middle, we are going to to draw the mean, which is 23,000. And let's assume that this area, this, this line, 18,500 lies there and... Uh, what we are finding is the area at the left of the 18,500 because we are pertaining for the probability that the employees less, owes less than uh, 18,500. So for our second approach, we have to find the Z value for uh, 18,500. Now we are using our formula that Z is equals to X minus mu over the sigma. So substituting with our values, we have uh, 18,500 minus 23,000 over uh, 2,500. We get the value of x of uh, negative 1.8. So yung uh, third approach po natin is find the appropriate area percentage. Uh, we have the z-score of uh, negative 1.8. So meron po tayong uh, table dito. Da, dito natin mahahanap yung uh, appropriate area percentage niya. So, ito na po yung uh, tinatawag na standardized normal distribution or, or the Z value. So, note lang po dito na the vertical bold numbers corresponds to the first and second digit of your Z value. While the horizontal bold numbers corresponds to the third digit of your Z value. So, ang hinahanap po natin is yung value po ng negative 1.8. Bali, i-disregard po muna natin yung uh, negative sign because we are getting area. So, wala naman pong area na negative. So, uh, sa paghahanap po is meron po tayong first and second digit na 1 and 8. So, 1.8. Then, yung third digit natin is 0. So, we are uh, going to plot po yung uh, horizontal and vertical kung saan sila magmimit. So, makakakuha po tayo ng sagot na 0.4641 So yun nakuha po nating sagot na 0.4641 when i-equate po natin sa percentage so meron po tayo nga 46.41% So the last approach po is to subtract area from uh, 0.5 So uh, bakit po kailangan i-subtract from uh, 0.5 yung nakuha natin kanina? Because po, yung nakuha natin kanina is value from our mean up to 18,500 only. So, ang gusto natin pong makuha dito is yung value from uh, 18,500 and below because we are partaking to the probability that the employees owes less than 18,500. So, yung, kabu uh, yung kalahati po ng area under the normal distribution equated to 0.5. So, Nakuha naman na natin yung area greater than 18,500 up to the mean. So, ibabawas natin doon sa kalahate. So, we have a 0.5 minus 0.4641. So, we get 0 0.039 and we get the final answer when equated to a percentage. We have a 3.59%. Therefore, the probability that the employees of RMC Company Inc. will owe less than 18,500 is 3.59%. So for our key takeaways, the normal distribution is the most important probability distribution in statistics because many continuous data in nature and psychology displays this bell-shaped curve when compiled and graphed. That's all for, for my report. Uh, thank you and stay safe, everyone. Uh, okay, again, no? uh, the normal distribution is the most common type of distribution assumed in technical stock market analysis and in other types of statistical analysis. So the standard normal distribution has two parameters. So the mean and the standard deviation. So for a normal distribution, 68% of the observation are within plus minus 
one is standard deviation of the mean. So 95% are within plus or minus two standard deviation. And 99.7% are within plus or minus three standard deviation. So the normal distribution model is motivated by the central limit theorem. So this theory states the average calculated from independent, identically distributed random variable have approximately normal distributions, regardless of the type of distribution from which the variables are sampled. No? Normal distribution is sometimes confused with symmetrical distribution because symmetrical distribution is one where a dividing line produces two mirror images, but the actual data could be two humps or a series of hills in addition to the bell curve that indicates a normal distribution.